Hello everybody, it's Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I've been hard at work at the uh, Sun Shafts, which I released recently. Never did do a tutorial video on that, so I'm going to include that at the start of this video, but then we're going to move on to the good stuff, which is the shadow mapped fog directional sunlight. So let's get started. I'm in the demo scene here, and I'm going to go ahead and click this checkbox to turn on the fog. And then I'm going to type M to enable mouse movement and mouse look. And I'm going to get this slider. I'm going to turn off automatic date and time right now. And I'm going to try and get the sun right behind this tree so I can start showing this off to you. On the Weathermaker prefab, underneath the fog object is a full screen fog screen space sun shafts. We'll start there. Later on in this video, I'll show you the fog shadows. Fog Sunshaft sample count determines how many Raymarch samples are taken. This is a value that you can play with. Uh, depending on the performance you're getting, you can raise or lower this. I'm going to start it off at 16. Uh, you'll notice right away that there's a little bit of dithering problem going on. And so this is where you need to start tweaking some values to till it looks how you like. So the first thing after you've set your sample count is to go down and say Sunshaft Dither and figure out a good value for this. If you tweak this just right, you'll get a pretty good balance between appearance and performance. Uh, this looks fairly reasonable. Um, I might increase my samples to just a little more and then bring that down just a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now those ni nasty banding artifacts are gone. Uh, maybe I'll change this to be the default parameters, but now it looks really nice. You don't see those nasty lines anymore. But again, you'll need to play with this to get it how you like. Depending on your resolution and platform, these values may look different. Sunchef down sample count. Now this effect is using the image, so it takes a snapshot of the screen right before it does the sun shafts and then basically marches from the center of the sun to wherever the pixel is and kind of blurs that out into a line and by downsampling that you can do a lot less memory access and it can fit more of the memory in a high speed cache so as this value goes down performance improves but the sun shafts get more blurry I found that 0.5 works pretty well sun shaft spread and controls how far the sun shafts spread out so basically the ray march instead of marching all the way to the pixel to accumulate the values it simply marches a little bit of the way and then just takes whatever it got and puts it at the final pixel. Uh, the gist of it is is this makes the sun shaft spread out less. So tweak that to your liking. The brightness controls the each pixel's brightness. You can see as it gets really high the dithering looks pretty bad so you probably want to leave that around the default value. Uh, the Sun Chef Step Multiplier works a little bit differently than the brightness in that it applies the full value at the center, but then as it marches out, this value decays down and down. So you may want to use this in place of brightness because it tends to look a little bit better. Uh, sun Chef Decay basically controls how fast the lights decay from the sun position, obviously down to zero. They decay almost immediately. Uh, probably leave that at the default of 0.97. It works pretty well. Sun Chef Dither again. That's what I was playing with earlier, trying to get rid of these nasty banding lines. Uh, you'll just have to tweak this to a value that looks nice for your scene, depending on your sample count. Okay, so now we have nice Sun Chefs. There's a couple of things you need to know about these. Number one is when you look away, they fade out because the sun isn't on the screen anymore. So you can see that those are now gone. I don't see any sun shafts looking away. As I come back, the sun shafts fade back in. Since this effect is highly performant, if you just want some sun shafts that the player can see while they look towards the sun, this may be good enough for your effect. But if you want to do something a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more performance intensive, you can use the Unity Shadow Map to map the directional light to the entire fog. I'll show you what this looks like now. Fog shadow sun only. So the fog shadow max sample count basically says what are the max number of ray marches that are going to be done. Uh, depending on the depth of the pixel, less ray marches are needed. But for pixels further back, it needs to ray march further. 
I'm going to go ahead and set this to 16. And you'll notice right away that this looks fairly decent and it looks similar to the other sun shaft effect. Uh, there's some parameters you can control. Again, we have the, the dithering parameter. That's probably where you want to start. You want to tweak this till it looks right. I've tried to pick one that looks pretty good in a, most cases, but you can tweak this if you're seeing too many uh, little tiny dots. But again, the default value is fairly decent there. You can always raise your sample count as well. The max ray length basically says uh, if the ray out is longer than this, then don't bother. So as it looks in the sky, it doesn't even attempt to ray march because it's pixels of infinite distance away, basically. So it's going to be really hard to shadow map that. Depending on your scene size, you could lower that to get a little bit even higher quality ray march. Um, you'll see as I lower that, the shadow kind of disappears the shadow mapping so uh, to set that to a value that looks right for your scene okay let's move on shadow multiplier so see the sun there at the center this increases the brightness of the sun at the center uh, this is uh, basically a way to make the sun shafts appear brighter as you look dead on for the sun uh, fog shadow power is one of two parameters that control the decay of these sun shafts at a value of zero. There is no decay, so the sun shafts everywhere are basically all the same brightness, which is an interesting effect, but may not look quite right for what you're trying to achieve, so you'll want to tweak this value to depend on the effect you're going for. Same with the decay. Um, as you lower that decay, you can see basically the, the sun shafts are getting dimmer as they get further away from the dead-on line of sight of the sun. Depending on your shadow power, this value will decay off less quickly. You can see that it's decaying off slower, and as the power goes there, they decay off even less. So again, tweak those values until it looks good for what you're going after. Finally, we have that dithering parameter again. You'll notice, depending on this value, if you set it to zero, there is no dithering, but then you are dealing with possible artifacts and gaps in the shadow mapping. So basically this dither is a way to kind of hide any gaps by having a lower sample count. For example, you could set that sample count even lower, and it looks fairly reasonable. I mean, it's not great, but it looks fairly reasonable. And then depending on what you want to do to try and smooth this out, raise and lower the dithering. I've even added these kind of magic dithering parameters. Feel free to play with those and see what it looks like. You can see the dithering changes as you slide this value around. I've tried to pick some pretty good defaults that look nice, but tweak those if you want the dithering to look a little bit different. Okay, so a couple of things to note. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this day-night cycle so I can show you some possible pitfalls you may run into. You'll notice that right now my light is shaking around like a Mad Hatter, and that's because Unity's shadow map is kind of finicky. If you move the sun even a tiny bit, just rotate it by fractions of degrees, the shadow map can be off by a few pixels, which is really frustrating. I'd love Unity to fix that, but in the meantime, if, since they probably won't, you'll have to do some workarounds and there's a couple of things you can do. The first is you can lower this brightness. So as you lower that, that kind of shaking becomes less obvious, but you don't get the nice effect of the shafts being bright right at the sun. So that may be one solution, but if you really want that brightness effect, there's a couple of other things you can do. You can try turning on the blur. So a Gaussian blur of 17 kind of hides the, the lines a little bit. Now this is still shaking a little bit. So there's additional things we can do. Uh, if you look at the day-night cycle, I recently added an update interval parameter. You could set this to some value. I'm going to set it to 0.67. Now you've kind of got this sort of jerky movement here. Uh, that may be just as bad depending on what you're going for. So you've got to try and figure out what values make sense for update rate versus jerkiness. That actually looks pretty good. 
if you're a player in your game just kind of staring off, not really paying attention, you can't notice that that's moving unless you stop to stare at it. So that's that may be a good enough picking a interval of like a third of a second or something might be good enough for what you're going for. You could also set this to a really high value, but then you run the risk of there being larger jumps in the sun position, and that could also be as problematic. So you'll just have to pick a value that works well for your game. Okay, let's move back to the fog. Wrap this up here. Um, I'm going to suggest that the higher you dither on this, that you consider using the blur shader. You can see that that dither value is pretty high, but I'm only using a sample count of 8, so that's pretty good. Let's turn this update interval back to 0 so I can slide that in real time. Now I'm going to turn off this uh, day-night cycle for now. You can see there's some decently bad dithering artifacts there, but I'm only using a sample count of 8, which is really small. If you go to, say, a Gaussian blur of 17, those dithering artifacts essentially disappear. So for a tiny sample count, you're getting some fairly nice looking sun rays in your scene. So let's raise up the uh, decay so that we can see some of the rays even when we're not looking at the sun. There we go. So it looks pretty nice. Sample count is only 8. You could even lower that depending on your uh, tolerance for performance and appearance and low-end devices you can really lower that even further so again depending on if you're on high-end mobile versus desktop or console all of these values are configurable and you just have to figure out what works and what looks nice for your game well I would really love to hear from you about this feature send me an email to support at digitalruby.com I'd love to answer your questions or take suggestions on how I could make this better. I'm planning on doing spotlights in the future and I'm obviously going to be looking at ways to make sure the performance is up to snuff because uh, again I've tried this in 4K and the performance does take a little bit of a hit so I'm going to always constantly be looking at ways to improve the performance. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and again send me an email. I'd love to hear from you, hear about your game and what you're doing. Thanks so much. Goodbye.